Machen Amick, D. Wallace Stone, and Anthony Perkins star in I'm Dangerous Tonight. Which cool Twin Peaks character stars in this movie? If you're thinking James, you're wrong. He was never cool. Shelly. <laughs> Credit to Tumblr. <laughs> anyway, uh, we watched I'm Dangerous tonight. Uh, we were having a mini Anthony Perkins marathon, mm. as you do. Um, and we came across this 1990 made-for-TV horror movie. <laughs> Machen Amick. Machen Amick, uh, you might know her from Twin Peaks. She stars in it as a college student named Amy, and she comes across a cursed Aztec cloak, mm -hmm. which uh, she ends up turning into a dress, and whoever wears it becomes a murderer. <laughs> And Anthony Perkins is there as her professor because he was paid for like two days work. Yeah. <laughs> he just drops by during parts like, hi, hey, I'm in this movie. Anyway, you won't see me again for 30 minutes. <laughs> it's sad out of the three Anthony Perkins movies we watched, the murder dress movie he's barely in was the best one. Yeah. <laughs> But they made sure to get him staring at the camera at some point at in some all. Point. That was the so other weird. two, though, had him at the end, like flat out psycho. This one was, I guess, the most subtle about it, but still at the end, during a speech for no reason, it's just like, anyway, Amy, when you stare to the abyss, the abyss stares back at you. You, audience, you're the abyss. <laughs> Whoever fights monsters should take care that in the process he does not become a monster. When you look long into an abyss, the abyss also looks into you. That was so <laughs> weird. That's the only time in the movie that happens where the fourth wall is broken like that. And it seems his only job in the movie, until the end, is really to just be creepy for no reason. Yeah. Because he's the guy from Psycho. Oh, it's you, Professor. I'm sorry if Sigmund startled you. I didn't mean to frighten you. Like, that guy could not get a yeah. break at all. So it has to be in there at some point. Anthony Perkins must look at the camera directly for no reason. <laughs> Why well, he does that speech like, perhaps we were the real monsters all along, kind of thing. <laughs> like, did, did this warrant this? Like, everything's done at this point. Yeah. Like, you're at the end of the murder dress movie. I don't know if you. It, it was that and the scene where um, Machen Amick has the speech about her grandmother, mm -hmm. where all of a sudden, like, the acting is turned on for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> Grant felt things just like you and me. She died. Because she was trying to warn me. She's pretty good. Like, even though this is a cheap movie, she's pretty good in most of it anyway. But yeah, there's a few parts where she's really acting more than this movie probably deserves. Yeah, I don't think I've seen her in anything where she was bad. Even the Baywatch pilot movie, she was still, she still acted really good yeah. in it. Even in a silly Riverdale where for some reason yeah. working at her daughter's school paper, like he's still like, well, I guess she might do that. All right, that seems reasonable. <laughs> Completely different than how she started. Remember when she was a psycho and yeah. everyone hated? Like, no, now she's, gonna, she's with the Scooby gang at the school paper. Archie got hot. He's got abs now. Six more reasons for you to take that ginger bull by the horns tonight. This has an all-star cast, because mm. it also has stupid Sean from Baywatch Hawaii. He plays football! I, mean, I know I haven't gotten to Baywatch Hawaii yet in, uh, in Baywatching, but lordy, he is the most useless sack of crap. He is the weak link. Since every team has a weak link, I'm gonna find the weak link. If you know that you're the weak link, I'm looking for the weak link. Sean is still looking for the weak link. Oh, no. What if it turned out to be that you were the weak link? That's an interesting thought, but uh, it's not possible. You know, like, I realize, like, that role is not his fault. <laughs> but this guy, he just looks stupid. Oh, yeah. He just looks like there's not a thought in his head. That beginning scene where he comes in, like, <laughs> I play football. <laughs> I'm Sean. 
<laughs> Seriously, football. <laughs> football. I didn't know you followed football. It, the actor's name is Jason Brooks, I think. Mm. He's Jason, but his character's name's Mason. Just so he doesn't <laughs> get confused. Hi, Mason. This was his first role, so they wanted to make it role. easy. Yeah. <laughs> He looks like if John Hamm was hit over the head several times with a mallet. <laughs> his stupid bullet. <laughs> He's such an asshole too. Like his character is like unbelievably stupid. I thought your cousin was the queen tease, but you're something else. He has sex with um, Amy's cousin for the first time, Gloria, and she's been like not having sex with him because she wasn't comfortable with it yet. But she did it because she thought that he was gonna propose, mm -hmm. and it turns out he just got like some football thing he was excited about. And he's like, oh, you thought I was going to propose? You thought that... <laughs> Sorry, babe. This boy's marrying the NFL. This guy's married to the NFL. <laughs> he knows she's pissed about it. But then he's just like, anyway, I'm going to go take a shower. You want to join me? Yeah. <laughs> she's like, aha, puts on the dress, kills him. <laughs> so I can't wait to be the weak link on the field. <laughs> I can't believe this happened to me. Even if she didn't have a cursed Aztec dress. I mean, mm -hmm. that was coming. Like, I don't know how you didn't think anything was going to come of that. <laughs> like, with Gloria, it's funny because she gets the title of the movie in her dialogue. Like, out of all the characters, it's so weird because she's the one that says, I'm dangerous tonight. That was such a random line for them yeah. to pick. I'm dangerous tonight. When she kills Sean or whatever his name in this is. Mason. <laughs> Mason. <laughs> Mason Jason. Yeah. She teleports the dress on kind of weirdly in like a cut. Just cuts to her mother. Go, Gloria! Then it's just all of a sudden she's wearing the dress. But she has a date with Mason completely fine. It goes without incident. It's apparent. Like, they talk later about the dress affecting you more based on how evil you are or something. <laughs> but apparently mood really affects it too because she wears the dress through the whole day. It's not till she steps on it later after he's like, oh, Yeah, I'm not married to you, NFL. And then that's when she's like, I'm going to kill him because of the dress. Like, everyone else pretty much... The moment they touch this dress, they lose their personality and go insane, but <laughs> she had a fine dinner and stuff with him before that. It's very inconsistent how people are affected with this, because some people, like, the power affects them even when they don't have it on, like the boyfriend character, Eddie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shelly! Yeah. He puts it on at one point and he goes crazy and then when it falls off he's not crazy anymore and he goes the longest without it mm -hmm. after putting it on. And then in the end, he's evil and he wants yeah. to, like, rule the world with her or something? <laughs> the stars, we can share the power together. Just think how much more we could love each other with a million volts surging between us. Can you feel his power surging between us? Mm. We can do anything. Amy, I hope you're not mad, but while you were knocked out, I changed your clothes for you. <laughs> It was so weird. Like, before we get into that part, like, we got, like, some other cast members I kind of want to go over. I want to talk a little bit about um, the grandmother character, mm -hmm. who was played by... And his wife. And his wife. <laughs> who was, uh, she was played by the lady who was Mrs. Howell on Gilligan's Island. This mm -hmm. was her very last role. Yeah. But she's got no lines at all and she just plays like a mute grandmother yeah she has to like to have her. a ring a bell to get service like the she's kind of uh, the family has to take care of her and amy's like immediate family is all dead she had to go live with her aunt and her cousin and she gets to take care of grandma now that she's moved in <laughs> yeah and she like they're just assholes and like ignoring the grandmother the whole time but they also, the movie kind of skims over the fact that Amy, while under the influence of the dress, murders her grandmother. I wouldn't say she's like 100% at fault for Certainly that. Certainly she'd feel guilty about it though. Yeah, I yeah. Uh, or at least sad her grandma was dead past yeah. one scene. Which, yeah, they do only give us one scene. It is a, a nice scene, I guess, acting wise for her. But yeah, then yeah. that's kind of like the, the next scene anyway. <laughs> they glance over a lot of the grief that should be in this like, movie. Anthony Perkins and his evil dog are there, but the dog's only evil for one shot. Yeah. <laughs> because he's the guy from Psycho. <laughs> yeah, this dog like wants to rip him his head off in one shot, then the next one's running by. Like, oh, who's got the treats? Oh, my yeah, trainer off screen's got oh, the treats. Biscuits? <laughs> biscuits? Oh, 
And then Gloria is chasing them down with the truck after she kills her boyfriend. And then she dies in a fireball. Like, that apparently Amy could just, like, foresee. Mm -hmm. She's just standing there doing nothing, like, No, don't go over there! But not trying anything at all. She knew that this vehicle worked by Grand Theft Auto rules. <laughs> so if it flips upside down, she knows eventually that's going to light on fire and explode. Because that's exactly how this works. <laughs> it's somehow... The dress is immune to being exploded, but it could still be cut up and yeah. sewn into something else. Yeah. And it could still be cut Shopped up later. Shopped shears like, and thrown in a wood chipper or whatever that was, and mulcher. Yeah, like that, that works, but it, fiery explosion, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Hey, Joey. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to report you to the Better Business Bureau. The dress ends up in the hands of D. Wallace who, due to the drug rehabilitation program, mm -hmm. is working at the morgue. But she is introduced so late into the movie, I forgot she was in it until she's there. And mm -hmm. then she's basically the main villain until the, the boyfriend kind of steps in and kills her off screen, which was weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's like, she just shows up in the last act. It was weird because they don't introduce her very well. They have the, the cousin get blown up. Everyone has like their grief over her dying or whatever. And then well, you cut, barely. Barely. <laughs> uh, nobody cared. You cut to like um, D. Wallace with these guys killing them. And you're like, who's this lady in the dress now? Well, How did she get you it? You see these don't... two that are like threatening to raper or something like get yeah. over here baby and then this other guy stumbles out from the alley she is just in with his throat cut and they're ah! and run away comically and you see she's got the dress like who's this how'd she get it what because yeah. they don't explain they don't show the morgue or anything literally just cuts to this random lady you don't know who she is yeah and you have a few scenes before you find this out that she was at the morgue like yeah. it was too long to leave that hanging yeah they explain it a bit later and it's just like oh she was like in the drug rehab program and gotten a job that like helping as an assistant that handled evidence at the police station which yeah. seems like a very bizarre job <laughs> for a drug rehab program i don't know about that one but. they're like wait who busted in and looked through the lockers and stuff and then disappeared with the flu could it yeah. be the drug rehabilitation lady <laughs> which i'm still like i don't know for sure if they're saying it was her or if it was anthony perkins because she would have had what she wanted unless like you said maybe she went through to get drugs which is also possible yeah I but it could have also it's... been anthony perkins trying to find the dress and uh, he broke in they're not really clear on that spoiler alert anthony perkins was evil yeah i can't oh. believe this <laughs> was a weird role for d wallace too i thought because like that's I, because she was d wallace stone d. Wallace stone because <laughs> i'm so used to her playing like mom types mm -hmm. uh and being blonde and they have it has to be a wig on her that they put on her and i don't know why they decided on that that all the women with the red dress have to have vaguely similar hair and we got a cop character played by um arlie ermy yeah Speaking of weird hair. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot more cut. hair yeah. than he usually does. It seems his part was kind of weird. Like, I get the the purpose of it, but it kind of seemed like it was split between him and Anthony Perkins. Like, mm. maybe in the script, this was one character at one point. Maybe. Because, um, I mean, obviously Anthony Perkins, they could only get for a short amount of time. Because he would just call randomly. Like, he'd be like, where are you? Are you alone? Oh, yeah, I'm at home or whatever. Oh, very well. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> All right, what was that about? He calls Yard Sale Man. You don't know it's him till later, but he calls Yard Sale Man. Like, he's really, he wants this cloak so badly, but he's just like... I don't want to go over there if it's not in the <laughs> yard sale. I'm just going to call. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> this thing he's apparently so desperate for that he went grave digging at the yeah. end. He's like, uh, you know, I better just call this one in. Yeah. <laughs> Did we go over the guy at the beginning? The no, professor? we didn't. The yeah. sequence of events there is a little bit off. Yeah. So apparently Anthony Perkins has dinner with his buddy, this professor at the college or university professor and his wife yeah, and his wife <laughs> <laughs> and then he tells him oh yeah i've got this big fine i uh, hope there's a secret magic cloak in there but i don't know yet i'm gonna go find out later or something <laughs> <laughs> then he goes and he does find it and he kills a security guard at the college and then 
comes home and kills his wife and then he puts it in his secret tickle trunk and then kills himself. <laughs> and then Anthony Perkins is like, I looked everywhere for it, but then I remembered he had this trunk he puts all of his prized acquisitions yeah. in. But then I remembered he was Mr. Dress Up and he always put his clothing back in the tickle trunk. <laughs> Like, Nobody's gonna get Mr. Dress Up! <laughs> Show a picture of him in the tickle trunk, it's all you need. <laughs> Anthony Perkins special tickle trunk. <laughs> Anthony Perkins has Mr. Dress Up. <laughs> <laughs> They tried to make it seem on the cover like Machen Amick was the villain in this because mm -hmm. it's her in the sexy dress like, ooh, ah. And then Anthony Perkins in the front like, ooh, he stars in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, in a little block yeah. under. And, and the description on IMDb, which must be what's like on the VHS tape, said like, oh, her and her professor have to team up to oh. destroy this. Yeah, that's what happened. Very well. Good night. It's only one scene that she puts it on. Well, I guess she has it on for two scenes, but there's one scene where she's evil in it, and then she's like at the dance and mm -hmm. neglecting her grandmother at yeah. home. Very evilly, and she almost does something really stupid, which is have sex with a weak link. Since every team has a weak link, I'm gonna find the weak link. If you know that you're the weak link, I'm so sorry. I'm looking for the weak link. And then she takes the dress off, and then she can see what he really is. I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> this ew. ew! I almost made a Man, horrible mistake. I'd even take Leo over this. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> it's like shallow Hal, right? <laughs> like she puts on the dress, and then it looks like a perfectly normal, adjusted human being, and then takes it off. It's like drool. Uh. Uh, it's me, Sean. <laughs> uh. See, no one's seen Baywatch Hawaii, so they don't know what we're talking about. No one watched no. this. <laughs> no one in the world. <laughs> hey, you know, Anthony Perkins was phoning it in just like David Hasselhoff in his last season. <laughs> anyway, I'm going on this plane. You find that cloak yet? Yeah. <laughs> Very well. Good night. It turns into a... A kind of cliched horror in the last scene, too, she, where she, like, knocks her out two twice. times. Yeah. She has her down twice, and all she... She doesn't take the knife away from her or anything. She just walks into another room on the phone. And then she does the same thing downstairs. Knocks her down again. She, she pushes her down the stairs. The granny murder stairs. She yeah. knocks her down those. And then just <laughs> walks over to a phone again. And then she gets knocked out. And then, like, oh, I thought the second time she fell over, she'd be dead forever. Like, hmm. Right at the end, you know, after she wakes up in the dress because Creepy Eddie changed her. Because apparently, I, I don't know. I don't know how he killed Dee Wallace or whatnot. But I would hope at least, the story's sake of his character, that he was in contact with the dress and it made him insane uh, and decide yeah. to dress her up I in this. I really don't know if I believe that he was a good guy in the end. Yeah, like we said, it's really weird about it affecting people that are in contact with it sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, he dresses her up and he's like, we can rule the world together or something with this dress. Like, I don't think so. I think it just kind of makes you insane, but all right. <laughs> Imagine the power. It's like, well, this doesn't give anyone powers. It just makes you kill people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it didn't help D. Wallace any. <laughs> you I know you can. If you don't, it will use you and it'll destroy you. And Shelly like convinces him like that we need to destroy it and stuff and eventually he stops being quite the creepster Eddie. <laughs> and he's like, okay. And they kind of she rips it off and they cut it up. But then she's there in her underwear when Arlie Ermy comes in and he's just like she gives the uh, evil smile at him. Yeah. I'm like, how would you not think she's guilty at this point? I just, I just wonder what's going on. Like, why, why is she not in any clothes but her underwear? And well, he'd, like... She'd mentioned the evil dress to him. Mm. So, but he's still, this you is would a think weird. She was at least crazy. <laughs> this is a weird situation to walk in on. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so I guess you would. 
you could piece together maybe the dress was involved, but I mean, man, mm -hmm. I don't know how they got off scot free. <laughs> she, like he even suspected her of like killing the grandmother for the inheritance or whatever. Yeah. Like she made like some money off of it. That same dress that like she was fighting with her grandmother with before she died that Gloria was wearing when she blew up and that the killer was wearing and then Amy was wearing and he doesn't they just leave it out in the yard like he knows he's been out there because he's like well, why did you put the body in the shed what was up with that mm -hmm. like, oh yeah because I thought I'd be in trouble uh it sounds legit uh, and then she just puts it in the wood chipper and puts it in a bag and then no one asks about this dress that was so important to this case. <laughs> when they started that scene, when she's like, you said she didn't have any family, right? Like, yeah, I was like, oh, maybe like she's so nice that she decides like the dress kind of made her do it so she'll be the one person to come to her funeral, you know, she didn't have anyone. But no, she's just like, I have something she like, dump, you're gonna dump this dress in your grave to be buried with you. <laughs> I don't know, I, I didn't take it as she just did to get rid of it and that was the only reason well she didn't do anything to be like you know rest in peace or some sort of like last message mm. about you know like someone Maybe. who was friendless and um, familyless i didn't take it quite as coldly as you did i guess with you that. know by the end of this movie like all of her family was dead her parents died before the movie started mm -hmm. uh her cousin died and then her aunt died she was murdered by d wallace yeah we didn't mention the aunt died too <laughs> yeah, she, she just falls asleep and that's the last time we see her because she's dead after that yeah. <laughs> so her entire family's dead and her professor's about yeah. to get this stupid murder dress back so <laughs> it's not over gotta wait for i'm dangerous tonight t-o-o -O. so really it was nice enough that she even came to her funeral considering that all her family is also murdered <laughs> she's been to a lot of funerals lately <laughs> When she visited Elijah Wood, and he said, I wouldn't let anything happen to your family ever. <laughs> His funeral. <laughs> the curse. <laughs> when you look long into an abyss, the abyss also looks into you. So, would you recommend this movie? Oh. <laughs> it's a tough one. Like... I thought it was enjoyable enough, but you know, it's a TV movie. It's there's nothing that spectacular, I guess. Like I think uh, Match and Amick does good acting and stuff, even though it's a cheapy production. I think um, like it's got enough likable actors and recognizable people from that time. Like if you enjoy them, you'll enjoy this. Even Anthony Perkins, he's not in it that much, but it's yeah. still funny. He's kind of phoning in some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's some parts, I guess, where he's trying a little more. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've seen worse TV movies for sure. Like it was. They, they... It's got like those crappy yellow credits at the beginning. Which oh is kind yeah, of, definitely. Which is one of the cheaper things looking about it. You it's can tell horrible. from the transitions that it's a TV movie because some of them are abrupt. Mm -hmm. I, I think like if you enjoy kind of early 90s, late 80s made for TV schlock like that, like it was pretty good. Yeah. Like it was funny. If you can get your hands on it, I think it just has a VHS release. Um, but check it out if you can because it was fun. And remember, when the abyss stares at you, you stare back at it or something. I don't know. Give me my cut-up dress. <laughs> Sorry, babe, this boy's marrying the NFL. <laughs> <laughs>